Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to building a UART or serial to USB memory stick bridge. And the whole idea is we're gonna show an example of how to bridge UART data, streaming incoming UART data, and write it directly to a file on a USB thumb drive or USB stick. And so we're creating a bridge between our serial data and our a file on a USB thumb drive. Before we get started, I wanna mention uh, PCB Way. PCB Way is where I get all my PCB boards and they're having a great contest for Maker. So the link's right there on the front page. Please check it out. Uh, if you're interested in Forstronics services, check out Forstronics.com. And if you like what you see here, make sure you subscribe to Forstronics channel or like the video. Okay, what we're gonna cover. I know I usually do more Arduino focused videos here, but I had to go outside of Arduino for a solution I needed for a project I recently worked on. And so what I'm using here for creating this UART to USB drive bridge is a microcontroller from FTDI or BridgeTech. I think they're, they're changing some of their name of their products to the BridgeTech company. But basically this is using a FT900 and they have a bunch of family of these different FT900 microcontrollers. But the important thing is, is they're high performance microcontrollers. They have a lot of different communication interfaces and FTDI or bridge tech, they specialize in chips, ICs or microcontrollers that take one type of communication and bridge it over to another type of communication. And that's what we're trying to do here. So that's why I chose this platform. Uh, I'm gonna be using their development board, which I'll show you in the picture, the MM900 EV2A, and there's an EV3A, and I think there's an EV1A, I think they'll all work. I have a link to the product page for the chip. And the reason I chose this is, if you've ever tried to use the USB protocol, it's fairly complex. And so I'm not an expert on the USB protocol, and I didn't wanna spend months trying to learn it so I was looking for a solution that had a great library or API or whatever you want to call it for using USB and FTDI did and this chip did and they had some great examples and they have great documentation. Uh, they leverage the Eclipse programming environment, which is uh, C based. So if you're familiar with Arduino, because I know a lot of my listeners are, th this has, you know, it's going to be more advanced than Arduino, but, but it has a similar code set as Arduino. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. I'm gonna show the example, I'll show how it works, and then I'll go over the code and I'll post the code to my blog. All right, here's my setup. So here's the FT, FT900 chip, and like I said, it has a UART channel, it has a USB host channel, and it has a USB device channel. We're gonna be using the USB host channel, which is gonna to talk to this USB type A connector where I have my USB thumb drive plugged in. And you can see there's a lot of stuff on this development board. Most of the stuff I'm not using, but they have CAN communication, they have SPI communication, they have a bunch of different features on this chip. It's running at a 100 megahertz clock, it's a 32-bit chip, so it's a fairly advanced chip. Here's the programming board, so you do need this programming board if you want to you know, flash code onto the microcontroller. Uh, I'm using this simple SparkFun uh, USB to serial interface just for this example for this program. So what I'm going to show you in a second, I'll show the working solution, then I'll go over the code. But what I'm going to show in a second is I'm going to use a serial monitor. I'm actually going to use the Arduino serial monitor, but you can use any serial monitor, whether it's TerraTerm or whoever you like. And I'm going to write stuff in my serial monitor. I'm also going to feed back stuff from this chip just for informational purposes to the serial monitor. And, but everything we write from the serial monitor we're gonna see goes onto a file on this USB thumb drive. Okay, so that's my setup. This is plugged into the computer that I'm currently presenting from. I'm trying to think, is there anything else worth covering? No, we'll, we'll go over the code. And so let's, let's take a look at this solution in action. Okay, what you're looking at is a serial monitor. You can use any serial monitor. I'm using the one from the Arduino IDE. I have it set for 115200 baud rate, and you can set different baud rates. I'll show you in the code where they set it. So you can set different settings for the UART communication. I'm just using the, the 15200. So I'm about to plug in my USB stick to start off the program, and we're gonna see some data written to the serial monitor. So first thing I do is I say, please plug in a USB device, which there is one plugged in. 
it says the device is detected, it enumerated it. And what enumerated means, and this is where you get into all the details on the uh, USB protocol is, enumeration means there's different versions of USB, there's different vintages of USB. And so when you plug in a USB device to a host, the host basically has to go through a discovery process to learn about what just, what just connected to it. And that's what they're talking about when they say enumerated. Then they say bombs, device found at level one, and bombs, I forget what bomb stands for, but it's basically a USB mass storage or memory device. And they're just basically saying, I found it at the file system level one. What I have in the code, which you can take out, but the file's name is gonna be Ftronics for Forstronics, and it's just gonna be a TXT. What, what the way the code's set up, and of course you can change this, is if it detects the files already on the drive, it deletes it, and then it creates a new one. Okay, so we have our file created. Now I'm gonna to write to it. So this is a test, press enter. So basically it detected that first byte. It wrote it to the file, it closed it. It's saying the timer value, the time it took to write to the file was zero. And my timer right now only works in 10 millisecond intervals. So if it's less than 10 milliseconds, it's just gonna show zero. Then it didn't get them all, so it went back through, there's a loop and it grabbed the other 15 bytes, wrote them, closed them, and those took about 10 milliseconds. And, you know, of course we can write more data. And it's just gonna keep storing it. nonsense and I have my automatically uh, end line and and character return what it's just doing though is it's you're gonna see in the actually let me just show you the file so we wrote all these bytes it goes through and loops them I'm showing you this from just typing but th this example can also and this is how I used it if you just have a source that is randomly or on a periodic basis sending data in it'll just grab it and write it I'm just showing it handwritten from the keyboard but you know, based on the timing it takes to write it, you can stream data in and you just have to make sure that based on the timing that you're not gonna overflow the buffer or you're not gonna lose any data. So that's a tough thing you have to do if you're screaming in data real fast, nonstop, you're probably gonna miss some eventually. But if you're coming in periodically or every once in a while, this, this program will definitely work to write data to the file. So let's look at the file. Okay. I have this out of the screen right now just because I don't want you to see some of my file stuff. Um, but let me open the, the ft.txt and you can see this is a test and of course we can write more data. It just keeps going and going. I spelled going wrong and then there's the, the nonsense. Now keep in mind, um, I had the carriage returns on. So if I didn't on my serial monitor, all this data would just be continuously concatenated together. If you wanted to write to a CSV file, you could just modify the code to put a comma after each write. And so, you know, the code's meant to be an example for you to build on. So there's our file. That was pretty easy. Let's take a look at the code. This is a special version of Eclipse for the BridgeTech, you know, uh, programming environment. And so that's what, if you're familiar with Eclipse, it's an open source uh, programming environment. One thing I want to mention before I go into this code is I mentioned how BridgeTech provides great examples. And so what I did is I took an example and I built on my own features or my own capabilities. So to be clear, a lot of the code I'm about to show you is not my code, right? I got it from one of their examples. So I just want to make sure I, I credit them. And then there's parts of it that I modified for this. So I actually leveraged this from the their USB H for host example file system. So where they show you how to set up a file system, I just added UART, some timing and writing to the file and so on and so forth. So you can check out their example. I renamed this and made it my own UART to USB file. I'll have the code on my blog. But basically all these includes were in the original example file, but you can see it, you know, it's including USB libraries and things like that. This is a um, sort of a printf library that they include and there's you know the file system libraries here's the name of my file you can change it to whatever you want 
the buffer. This is the buffer that grabs the UART data and then I grab the data from the buffer and write it to my file. And so I made this buffer fairly large. You can make it even larger. You know, this chip has a lot of features. I'm not using a lot of all the memory or you can make it smaller if you want to. But the idea is you'll see that the serial data that comes in, there's an interrupt that reads that data so I can do other stuff. And the whole idea is in the background, this buffer gets full and then every once in a while, I'm gonna take what's in that buffer and write it to my file. Oh, I'll, I'll say this too. The reason I use this solution is because I didn't want to become a USB protocol expert. So here's some USB objects that are set up for handling and communicating with the USB device. To be honest, I don't have an answer for in detail what some of these do, but uh, BridgeTech has a documentation on all their USB library. Once again, they're, they're, one of the reasons I went with one of their solutions is they do great documentation. This tracks the position in the file where I'm at. So if I open and close the file, I know where I am. I don't lose track of that. Oh, here's just a timer. Remember when you saw the 10 milliseconds or zero or more, this is the variable that's doing that timer inside a, uh, a timing interrupt. Here's the structure that stores the data. So we, it has a, a array called data and you can see our, our buffer size is put into that array for setting it. And then we create an object for that strut Here's some more USB uh, functions that were created by FTDI. This is a UART function that they use for writing. But now we're getting into some more of the important functions. So this is a timer interrupt. So this interrupt is going to go off every 10 milliseconds. It then handles the some of the USB action. So it's basically going off every once in a while, executing some of the USB code to handle the USB data. And then I put my timing variable. So this is what I use to track, you know, how many milliseconds, but only in 10 millisecond increments. These are some USB specific things, disk initialization, disk status. I'm not gonna go into these in detail, but, you know, go to the uh, bridge tech documentation. Disk read. Okay. This is for the file system, fat time. Here's where we get to some of the UR code. So if you're an Arduino user, you might recognize this, the available function. So they have an available function to tell when there's serial data. And you can see there's our ring buffer size and it's pulling some of the variables from the, uh, the structure we created to check if there's any data in the buffer. This is the receive function. So this is gonna basically write data to the buffer or array. And then of course, note that there's more data there. And then here's our serial interrupt. So Arduino serial code has an interrupt, but we just don't see it, it happens in the background. But this one we set up, we check to see if it was a UART interrupt, which it definitely should be, it's a receive one. And then we call our UART read function, which we just showed, we feed the data there, we do some uh, housekeeping on the, the buffer, and then we're done. And so whenever data comes in, it'll trigger this interrupt, it'll read it, and then it'll go back to the program, the program can just run. Uh, this is for the USB file system. These functions I did put together, but I basically copied code from their USB functions. And you can see I have some printfs here just to, you know, for debugging purposes. Of course, you can take these out when you create it, if you use this for creating a real program. Here's where we create the file. Notice here, this is where if it already exists, I delete it. Now, you don't have to do that. If you want to just keep adding more files, you can do that. Uh, if you try to have a file, though, with the same name and then try to add another one with the same name, you'll, you'll get an error. So here I just delete the existing file and then I create a new one. And if it wasn't there, I just create it. So that's where we create the file. Here's where I'm writing the data. So the serial data comes in, it goes into a buffer right and then every once in a while i pull that buffer and write it to my usb file that's done by this function and this is the array this data because you can see it's a pointer and there's how much data's bytes are in the data and this is a handle to the usb information so i feed that into the function and once again the these functions come from their different libraries so this comes from the ff.h their file system library and so they have all this documented, so that's where I got these different. So I'm saying open the file, example file, and that's the ftftronics.txt. You can see it when I scroll over it. Then these macros, I'm just saying we want to write to the file and we want to open an existing file because the file should already exist. We, we created it already. 
Then I do you know, some, some printfs. Here's read from file. I don't actually use this, but I did for debugging. So if you put this in there, it'll open up the file and read all the data to the serial monitor. Here's a function I created, but I used a lot of the code that I got from the different FTDI functions. But this is do all USB stuff. So this is just setting up the USB, USB initialize, you know, get connect state. So this is checking to see if it's plugged, our USB thumb drive is plugged in. If it's not, it tells us to plug it in. And so all this, you know, USB device is enumerated. All this is done. And then here's my setup function. So in my setup function, here's where I set up my UART communication. Here's if you didn't want to use the same settings I'm using, you can change them here. Uh, then I print out some information, attaching the interrupt for the timers. This is where I set up the timers. Uh, and once again, this is all documented, but basically I'm dividing down the clock and I'm creating a, uh, a timer. I disable uh, my UART receive or transmit interrupt because I don't need that. I set up the receive interrupt though. I attach the interrupt and I enable the interrupts globally and I do all this setup. So here's all, do all USB stuff. And I, I need this file object later to feed into some of my other functions. So this is all done in setup and here's their main, which once again, if you're an Arduino user, main doesn't keep looping. So you got to put a loop in there but I just call my setup function, which we just saw, which sets up the UART, it sets up the USB. It actually creates the file. This, this is the position variable where I track where I am in the file, where I left off. And then here's my loop that I just loop forever. And here's my timer variable. So I'm resetting it each time in the loop and timing how long it takes to write data to the USB. So what I do is I just keep looping. Remember my UART communication comes in via an interrupt so I just keep looping and once I know there's some data in the buffer by checking if it's available, you know, if it's more than zero, then I, I make a funk, excuse me, I make an array the size of the ring buffer. I read data from it. Chances are I won't be reading as much as the size of the ring buffer, but I just check whatever data is in there. I read it. And then I write data to the file, which is the function I showed you earlier. And I'm putting in my array, the buffer. And then I'm just printing out the timer value, value excuse me. Now note, you know, I detach the interrupts, but we really never get here. This loop just loops forever. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna post this code, just this file, just this C file to my blog. And then what you would do is you would put it in this other project, example file system, replace their C file with this one, and then you, you can name it and compile it. The reason I'm telling you this is there's a bunch of other files that are included. I'm not gonna post all of those. I'm just gonna post this one and, and you're gonna need to add it to, the, to a project. And once again, I got it from the project USB H example file systems that should have all the files you need for it. Okay, that's it for building a UART to USB memory stick slash drive bridge. Basically writing UART data to a file on a USB thumb drive. Once again, check out PCBWay, check out their maker contest. They're a great company, I enjoy working with them. If you liked what you saw here, please like my video. And if you have anything to add or build on, use the comment section or any questions, I guess, use the comment section. Thank you for watching.